May the risen Christ be with you. Uh, good morning and welcome to our uh, morning worship for Crossroads United Methodist Church on the west side of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we're glad you've joined us today, whether you've stumbled on us for the first time or you've been a regular uh, watcher uh, or attender when we were able to gather in person. Uh, we're glad to have you today. My name is Don Wallach. I am the pastor here at Crossroads. Uh, you just heard from Zach Kasperson, our music director, uh, and he'll be along during the service in order to uh, lead us in our singing as well. Uh, I uh, asked folks uh, who have been with us regularly uh, to have a candle ready, and so if you uh, missed that memo or it's your uh, first time with us, uh, grab a candle. Uh, this is your chance right now and have that ready to light uh, in just a couple of moments. We're continuing our series, The Heart of the Matter. It has gone through the whole Easter season uh, because Easter is not just a day. It is an entire season in which we are reminded that the spirit of the risen Christ continues to dwell with us. I try to remind us each week uh, of something written about the early church in Acts chapter 2. Uh, day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. We're sort of creating a uh, temple in our hearts. Since we can't be together in a physical space, we can be together in that way. And so I want you to uh, just take a deep breath and settle in for our experience here today and place your hand over your heart and then lightly tap in a heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us take this time to center on you for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us in every moment, with every breath, and with every step we take. Take another big deep breath. Make sure you're relaxed and uh, settled in. Uh, and uh, at this time, I would invite you to light your candle uh, and then also invite you to enter into this uh, worship experience as authentically as you can. Uh, I know it's odd. Uh, you're in a chair, maybe you're at your kitchen table, maybe you're in the living room. Uh, I know uh, one household last week was all set up on their back porch before our live stream uh, pooped out on us. Uh, so wherever you are, just get into a comfortable position, relax. Uh, and get ready to uh, sing and pray and hear the Word of God just as you would if we were gathered together in the sanctuary. And now here's uh, Zach Kasperson to lead us in our first hymn, which is Open My Eyes That I May See.
And please join me in the unison prayer of the day. God of life, your eternal Christ, once dwelt on earth, confined by time and space. Give us a faith that discerns in every time and place the presence among us of the one who is head over all and fills all, even Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord. Amen. Today is uh, Ascension Sunday. Uh, as the early church began to organize and develop itself and uh, develop seasons of worship, uh, the uh, day of Pentecost uh, was preceded in the early liturgical calendar by a remembrance of the day that Jesus ascended to heaven about 10 days before. Uh, and so that would have been last Thursday, uh, but I usually do it the Sunday before Pentecost uh, because I want to make sure that we don't uh, miss what I think is an important scripture. Uh, and so here uh, is the account of the ascension from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, it also shows up in the Gospel of Mark uh, and is in the Acts of the Apostles. And so here from Luke 24, Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Uh, look, I'm sending to you what God promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them, and having blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple, praising God. This is the word of God for the beloved people of God. And thanks be to God. Uh, you know, uh, most folks uh, can't figure out what to do. Uh, with this story about the ascension, because uh, I don't know about you, but uh, the last time I saw somebody uh, ascend into heaven was never. Uh, and so it's hard for us. We're in a scientific society, and it's difficult for us to think about uh, exactly how did this happen. Uh, and oh my gosh, I've seen all kinds of illustrations and photos and paintings. I uh, couldn't find good ones in enough time that I could share with you uh, here, and hopefully next Ascension Sunday I'll have that ready to go. Uh, but I was wondering, uh, was it like uh, beam me up, Scotty, and Jesus kind of dissolved and, and ascended? Uh, did he kind of float up into the clouds, kind of like a leaf going in reverse? Uh, or was it more like a, a flash of light? We just, we just don't know how to quite comprehend what's happening there. Uh, my wife, Linda, for a time uh, lived in Arkansas. And while she was there, she went and saw one of those uh, outdoor dramas about the life of Christ. Uh, many of you have been to similar things, I'm sure. Uh, and she said it was uh, great as far as uh, those things go. Um, until they got to the story about the ascension, uh, at which point the actor playing Jesus was raised up by a uh, wire and began swooping around kind of with his hands out like Superman. And uh, at that point, uh, Linda thought, oh dear, I guess not everything could be perfect in this play. We just have a hard time figuring it out, you know. Uh, but that doesn't mean there isn't truth in the story for us. Uh, it just means that we need to focus on uh, why this episode gets relayed to us. It's in two Gospels and in the book of Acts. So the early church must have thought it was important to pass this on to future generations like us. Uh, 
the, the key for me uh, is when Jesus says, I am sending you what God promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. Uh, and so maybe you remember the last uh, couple of Sundays I've mentioned John 14, and Jesus makes a similar promise. Uh, so it, today it's, I'm sending you what God promised. Uh, and in John 14, we get that fleshed out a little bit. Uh, God, I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus says to his disciples. God is sending a comforter, a helper, a companion, an advocate uh, to uh, be with you as you go through your life. Uh, and this advocate and helper will teach you and remind you of all that I have taught you. Uh, and last week I mentioned that uh, that reminder of all that Jesus taught probably has something to do with when uh, a young man asked him what the greatest commandment was. Uh, Jesus says, what do you read in the Torah? And the man says, you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I think when it comes right down to it, uh, the Spirit is here with us, the Spirit of the risen Christ is with us to just remind us that that's kind of the core of what it means to live a Christian life. Uh, so as we move through this Easter season, and actually next Sunday is Pentecost, and that's technically the end of the uh, church season known as Easter, uh, I want us to remember that through the Spirit, the risen Christ continues to companion us along the way, just as we heard in this story uh, about the ascension, when Jesus says, uh, you will get what God has promised, it's coming, uh, fear not. We've also, in the last few weeks, uh, picked up snippets from some of the early letters to the Christian church. Uh, and so there's a, a little piece from Ephesians today uh, that I'd love to read, and you've got a portion of it there uh, on your screen. I'll read uh, a bit more. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ, who fills everything in every way. I just love that idea of opening the eyes of your heart to see the hope of God in the world. And then the reminder that the church is the body of Christ. Uh, the Spirit is with us, but we are the hands and feet of Christ now. Uh, this is what God has to work with. And we may chuckle at that, and there are days I look in the mirror and say, I'm the hands and feet, okay. <laughs> It'll only take a work of God to make that happen. Uh, but it's true. The risen Christ is present with us through the Spirit, uh, and we are the ones who embody Christ to others. And so I wonder, can we open the eyes of our hearts uh, as we live through this very difficult season of life in our society, and in the church, so that we could see Christ's presence all around us, and in everyone, and in every circumstance. Can we open the eyes of our hearts to do that? Take a moment and open the eyes of your heart, and just look around wherever you are. Uh, maybe you're at the kitchen table, the dining room table, uh, in your den, the living room, uh, out on your back porch, on your patio, uh, if your Wi-Fi extends that far. Just look around. Uh, who do you see? And what do you see? Do you see mementos uh, from your life? Do you see persons around you? Uh, pictures of grandkids? Each of those things surrounds us. And when we open our hearts and use the eyes of our heart, 
we see love and gratitude all around, no matter what is true for us in our present moment. So I don't know about you, but I have found it challenging lately uh, to see with the eyes of the heart that Christ has transformed in love. Uh, for some reason, it has become uh, controversial uh, for people to take steps like keeping their distance or wearing a mask when they're out among people in public. And I really just can't understand this. Um, every medical expert, every study that's been done, every uh, public health official in every state uh, has said over and over that the evidence is clear that if everybody has a mask on when you're gathered with people and you keep your distance, then the rate of transmission of the disease we're fighting in this pandemic goes way down. And since we don't have an effective treatment or a vaccine yet, the best we can do is slow down that transmission so that our uh, medical uh, teams and our medical science uh, can catch up with it. Uh, but man, uh, people are so uptight about wearing this mask. Now, there are appropriate exceptions uh, folks who have breathing issues. I know there are folks who, with psychological issues that the mask feels like they're being suffocated and, and that triggers an anxiety attack, which certainly don't want to happen. But that makes it even more important for everybody else that can wear a mask to wear a mask. A couple of Saturdays ago, I had to make a run to the grocery store. We've been uh, trying to have things delivered, but I had to run out and pick up a couple of things. Uh, and went in the store and, uh, you know, all the employees had masks except for a fair percentage of them who had pulled the masks down under their chin so they could chat with folks. Only about 10% of the people shopping, my estimate from eyeballing the crowd, uh, had masks on. Uh, nobody was really giving any space to anyone else. And I actually got a few dirty looks from folks because I had the mask on. I just, man, really? I mean, you have to wear a shirt and shoes to go in the store too. Just put the mask on. I uh, had a wonderful uh, session with my therapist this week, uh, and she told me her husband uh, went to Target. And uh, she didn't say which Target it was, but uh, he was coming down an aisle, got to the end, and kind of peered around the corner a little bit, you know how you do to make sure you're not going to run into somebody. And there was a young couple coming, and so he just stopped to let them pass to give them space before he went out uh, and made his turn. And uh, this young couple, as they came closer to him, were looking at him and laughing, and uh, just as they were about to be past him, uh, one half of the couple turned and went <coughs> in his direction. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? I, I don't understand uh, why you wouldn't do this. I'm having a hard time seeing with the eyes of a heart that's been transformed by love when I look at some folks' behaviors. Maybe you're having that difficulty too. I spend uh, a fair amount of time on social media uh, that is uh, becoming uh, rapidly not good for my mental health. So there will probably be less and less of it, but holy cow, the uh, eruption this last week uh, about uh, folks going back uh, into their churches to worship in person uh, and the uh, harshness and nastiness uh, that's been flying back and forth on social media has amazed me, just amazed me. Here, you know, the churches that are still closed, uh, as Crossroads is and will continue to be until our public health officials and our uh, bishop uh, suggest that it may be safe to resume, at least in phases. Uh, man, I just can hardly believe the nastiness especially when we have clear evidence in, I know, uh, in Arkansas and Alabama and Florida, I'm pretty sure a couple of other states, but those are the three I remember, 
uh, churches have reopened and then had to close again a couple weeks later because they became a hot spot for transmitting the virus. Why, why would you do that to your neighbors <laughs> or to your flock? I, I'm just having a hard time seeing with the eyes of a heart that's been transformed by love when I look at some of the words and actions of folks, uh, many of whom profess to be Christian. Well, here we are today with this story about the Ascension, a strange story that's difficult for us to decipher and comprehend. But in it, we get a reminder of the promised Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the risen Christ, who walks with us and companions us along the way as we live our life of faith. Uh, and reminding us uh, of the core of Jesus' teaching to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we have this reminder from the letter to the Ephesians that when we seek out that presence of the risen Christ, our hearts will see in new ways. And when we're seeing in new ways because Christ has transformed our hearts, we become the body of Christ, the church, and we're able to embody that to others, even the ones who annoy us. How will you try this week to see through the eyes of your heart, a heart that's been transformed by the presence of Christ? How will you try to see through the eyes of your heart as you look around you this week. Please do try. Try a bit each day. I dare say our society needs us to do that now more than ever. Amen. Let us prepare to pray with uh, this uh, meditative song that we introduced last week. Uh, it's very simple, uh, and you will catch on, I'm sure, as Zach plays it for us.
Let us pray. Risen and ascended Christ, you surround us with witnesses and you send us the Counselor, Helper, Advocate, Companion, the Holy Spirit, who opens our minds to understand your teaching. Bless us with such grace that our lives may become a blessing for the world. As we gather together in spirit and in the temple of our hearts, uh, though separate in physical space, we ask that you hear the prayers of your people. We pray for all the requests, the concerns, the difficulties held in our hearts this day, that you would bring health, wholeness, peace, confidence, and faith in all situations. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your church throughout the world, and especially Crossroads, that all might genuinely and humbly serve you, even in such a disruptive time in the life of the church. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in our community, our state, our nation, and all the nations of the world, that they would lead with mercy, wisdom, and justice, always seeking peace and the welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and for those in prison. We ask especially that you offer your healing and loving presence to those who are victims of the COVID-19 pandemic, along with their families. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the doctors, nurses, aides, patient assistants, chaplains, and administrators who are on the front lines dealing with those who've been sickened during the pandemic. Give them strength, give them wisdom, give them compassion, and grant them good health. Lord, in your mercy. Most loving God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us through your Spirit to the fulfilling of your purpose. We pray all this in the name of the risen Christ, and we pray with the words that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you for your ongoing giving to Crossroads. Uh, gosh, the uh, offerings that have come in, uh, either through you uh, dropping them off or sending them in the mail or doing it online, uh, have done a great job of helping us uh, at least tread water financially. Uh, yeah, of course, there are challenges, uh, but we are going along, getting along uh, okay. Uh, thank you for all of that, and you can see on your screen where to go on the website uh, and the address to mail uh, your offering if you would like to do that. Uh, we will close today with uh, one of my favorite uh, songs of praise, uh, open the eyes of my heart, uh, which ties directly uh, into both the ascension and that a little snippet from Ephesians that I read earlier.
Friends, remember God is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way. God is right beside you whispering, peace be with you, guiding and directing your path, so do not live in fear but in joy, for that is the heart of the matter. And so, beloved of God, take heart. Friends, I, like many of you, yearn to be together again with you uh, someday soon. But as I mentioned, we are going to uh, follow the direction of public health officials uh, and our bishop and the conference staff who are laying out procedures uh, for what it needs to look like for us to do worship safely. Uh, when we're able to do that, uh, we absolutely will but we're not going to rush back just because we're impatient. We want everyone to be safe. And so this week, be safe. And let the eyes of your transformed heart see everything around you with love this week. Amen.